Welcome to the latest episode of Platform. Today, we're going to be speaking to Rob Kellett. Now, most people will probably be familiar with Rob because of his edit Neon Rolling that he did with Josh Nielsen in China. Um, had some really great skating and the film in Nedden was on point. I think most of it was filmed at night and it had a lot of after effects and was just really well executed. Um, but Rob is he's been basically responsible for loads of stuff. Um, he does demos and or did demos in China with Josh Nielsen. Been doing that for a while. And he was also in China at the time that the coronavirus pandemic, you know, kicked off and they filmed stuff during lockdown there. So just want to talk to him about that and what it was like being in China when, yeah, all that was starting because that's insane and it must have been pretty random and getting back to Australia and if that was a struggle. Um, he has also, you know, got his own YouTube channel, which has got quite a following and he's been doing that for quite a few years. Um, I think he was skating for REMS for a while or at least promoting the brand. So I want to talk to him about that because he's one of the last remaining people that I can think of that is actually skating REMS. Um, and also he recently got a pro wheel from Conjure and as a result filmed a promo called Time, which is really good. Again, really well filmed and edited, got a nice little kind of storyline in the middle of it too. Um, what I like about Rob is he's basically one of these people that's like the new generation of blading where he's not waiting for other people to do it for him. He's doing everything for himself. So he films, he edits, um, he's really good with After Effects. He, you know, creates his own content. He also has his own brand called Stay Rolling, which a bunch of people are wearing and it's starting to kind of pick up some clout and you know be a little bit popular so it's just quite fascinating and i wish more bladers would do things like that they'd stop waiting for companies to do things for them or you know stop chasing sponsorship and just do things for themselves or try to do as much for themselves as possible and yeah i just think it would be interesting to pick his brain because obviously he's living in australia on the other side of the world and talk about the scene there and the national history of it because australia's got a huge scene dating back to people like you know tom fry and scott crawford and tim ward to modern day people that are you know carrying the torch and doing excellent things for blading people like cj wellsmore and ryan arnold and gav drum so yeah plenty to talk about can't wait to do it before that though cue the music Good eye, mate. <laughs> was that was that yeah. good? Was that did that sound genuine? Yeah, that sounded genuine. <laughs> right. My only frame of reference for Australian accents is uh, home and away, so I'll just do Alf impressions. Oh yeah. <laughs> frequent points. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 did cause... you ever see the viral videos of Alf? Like, did I ever see uh, what? Like there was like some viral videos of Alf Stewart, like where people had like dubbed over it with like a bunch of swearing. <laughs> That would work because he's he's quite an angry old man. Yeah, that would oh, yeah. that would go. Um, yeah, he ended up getting kind of like angry about that series, the like spin off thing, and like trying to sue the people or something like that. I, mean, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because British people just grew up with well, British people of my generation just grew up with Home and Away, Neighbours, and Heartbreak High. So yeah, yeah, hell yeah, all classic. Were you were you old enough to watch Heartbreak High? Uh, I mean, it was a little bit before my time, but I have heard about it. Like a lot of my like, older blade friends are like kind of into it, I guess. <laughs> I knew about it, but not very into it. Though. <laughs> um, how old are you? I'm 27. I'll be 28. Right. Okay, right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's quite funny. Um, have, did, have you seen the new Danny Beer edit that dropped last night? Yeah, I watched it last night, like right before going to, going to sleep because it kind of came out like 40 minutes, like... Uh, like before midnight or something I don't know for, for us for our time so yeah um, yeah I thought it was alright what do you think I thought it was insane I like yeah. there was there were so many clips that I was like I'm gonna have to watch I, we were out skating at the time and um, just randomly checked my phone and both me and my friend were like oh right we're gonna sit and watch this for a few minutes and we we're both just like what the hell was that what was that yeah. I'm gonna have to rewatch. I don't understand what he did there there yeah like Man. 
crazy. He's wild. And I didn't even like know that it was his edit until a little bit in, like, because they didn't tease it or anything like that. They just yeah. It. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is like the thing. Oh, sweet. And like, yeah, man. Yeah, it was wild. I love his skating. Like, he's, uh, he's super inspirational. I don't know. He just had fun with it. Um, it's done the job as well because I just checked just before I came on this call and it's already sitting at like over 18,000 views and people yeah. are already going wild and all the Facebook groups being like this is amazing or people are going this is shit I hate this why is why are people like destroying rollerblade and and I'm oh. like it really doesn't matter if you like it or not the fact that everyone's talking about it just like when the skate came out it's it's worked so yeah you, man you and they are beautiful it. damn like when they came out sexy <laughs> i'm not i'm not a fan of clear skates but yeah again it did the job because everyone's everyone's talking it's probably the most memed skate of the past decade so yeah for sure especially that beans thing i don't know yeah the beans the stuff. beans thing julio must just love it every time someone attacks his brand or makes fun of a product because he's like thanks for all the free promo just you're yeah it's like that saying like bad publicity is good publicity or whatever i don't know yeah the like, community yeah. is just it's doing the job for him yeah so yeah, yeah exactly. it's pretty funny you know? Oh, yeah. um, congratulations on your pro wheel dude thank you i'm i'm hyped man i'm still it still feels like a bit of a like a dream i'm waiting to wake up or something but i was yeah, about I'm, to say yeah how did it how did it feel when they arrived in the mail and you got to literally hold it and look at it and be like that's my name um they actually came and for like two days i didn't open the box because i was like i was just busy doing other other stuff and kind of wanted like a moment to sit down and like properly enjoy the moment rather than just like rush into it. So I waited like two, I just kept staring at the box. Like, no, no I'll, I'll wait till like I've got like time to sit down and like properly like process the whole thing. And even then I was still like, yeah. I don't know, speechless in a way. <laughs> two entire days before opening your own pro wheel. You're there's something yeah, wrong man. with you. I wouldn't, like, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. I'd be like, knowing that just I knowing that they're man, there. Yeah. I was like out filming and like skating and, and stuff. And then I'd come home really late and just like, you know, ha have to do stuff for work or something like that. And I was just like, I don't want to just rush it. And I like, open them like, yeah, that's cool. And like, no, nah, I really wanted to like sit down and I don't know, enjoy the, the special moment, I guess. But surely you were going out skating and bumping into your friends and telling them like, oh, the wheels arrived. And they're like, open it, you idiot. Yeah, basically. I even messaged uh, the guys from Conjure and they were, they were saying like, yeah. Uh, I said, oh, they had the package drive, and, and then they were saying, like, oh, like, what are you thinking? I'm like, I haven't even, I haven't even <laughs> a chance to open it yet. Like, I really want to just, like, yeah, make it a special, a special thing. But yeah, when I opened them, man, it felt good. I don't know. It's like, I think every skater obviously has the dream of, of like having a, a product with their name on it, or you know, when you're a kid. Maybe some people lose that dream as they get older or something like that. But yeah, when it, when I opened it and like saw them in real life, it definitely was like oh my god this is real like this is actually a thing so, yeah, yeah um great. plus it's not like you're just getting a set of wheels and some cheap like plastic coating like conjure go all out with the packaging and make yeah. it look really special so yeah. that would add to it as well because you're like wow like look, look look at this final product yeah they make the like i i love what they do i love how they do their like their packaging and everything it's like an experience it's kind of like more of a collectible in a way yeah when you edit i mean obviously you can escape them some people might collect them i know there's a few guys that have got every kind of wheel since the beginning and they collect them all and all the packaging and stuff like that but i just like i like the idea of cool packaging it's like when you get a new iphone you know even the packaging is like kind of cool it's like an experience opening it up so, yeah. yeah yeah hell yeah try try taking the headphones out for a second i think the headphones might be disrupting the audio those are like crackly yeah is that a bit better Oh, that is way better. Yeah. All right. Get rid it, of these cheeks. It, it kind of is one of these weird things that works both ways. Like sometimes people don't use them and it makes it really bad. Yeah. Then sometimes people use them and it just, yeah, it's a total mess. Yeah, Earbuds man. tend to be the worst. Earbuds are like. Yeah, they're the ones that go like right in, but yeah. yeah. They're like cheap Chinese headphones that I've had for years. So yeah. yeah that'll put it. Um, how, mm -hmm. did you, how did you first get hooked up with Conjure? Because it's kind of random because they're based in like Florida or something, aren't they? Yeah, they're based in, in, in Florida and um, it was oh, it was like such a weird thing. Um, so basically like in, uh, in 2019, I was over in Chongqing in China with Josh and we were kind of just talking about like, oh, we need to really start trying to like 
go in on Instagram and like, you know, start like posting a, a bunch more blade stuff and stuff like that. And I, I'd for like a year and a half been wanting to start doing like a bit of a YouTube thing. Cause I had edits on Vimeo, but no one really used Vimeo anymore and that kind of deal. Um, and then I was just like, you know, posting, posting edits on Instagram and stuff. And like, I'd always get, um, you know, that Gary Vaynerchuk guy, he's like a, he's not a blader or anything. He's like some social media wizard guy that is like all over Instagram and Facebook. He's, I don't know, but he's like this crazy dude. And he was like giving some advice about how every day you should spend like a dollar 80 on Instagram, not like actual money, but like if you think of commenting on someone's photo is like spending two cents. And he says like to grow your Instagram, you should comment a dollar 80s worth of like things each day. And like message people and when you message people message them by their name and like reply to them by their name and i was just like watching it like oh whatever um oh, like I'll, I'll try it and then literally the next day i saw a post from conjure um that they had like put up the like last four wheels or the first four wheels and like how their journey so far and i've been like following them already and i was like i'm actually going to reach out and like and like message them and say like yo this is actually so cool to see like a new wheel company doing like cool graphics as well not just some like real simple logo stuff like they were already doing really cool graphics um and just like wanted to like kind of just give them praise for what they were doing and uh they got back to me and they were like thanks so much like for the love la 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 and then um like literally two minutes later they like had liked a bunch of my stuff on my page and then got back to me like oh like you're like you're killing it like we want to send you out some wheels to try um and I was like, oh, I'm kind of in China. It might be a bit of a mission with postage, but they like, they hooked it up and like getting stuff shipped to China uh, is pretty hard from the States. So yeah, so they actually like sent out a set of wheels and um, and they were the Sean Smith Pro Wheels, which were, were amazing. And then I filmed like a little edit for them and then they like a review, I guess. And then uh, they did this whole like sponsor me tape contest thing. And I had, luckily I'd been filming clips for that, like for something. So I, I put a bit, put them out. And then uh, it was like a vote system of who, like whoever people voted for got on the team. And then I managed to make that. So I was like, that was the way in <laughs> and I'm blessed ever since. Yeah. Also, that's kind of, it's kind of interesting that things like social media make stuff like that easier because for brands, mm. it's easier to quantify, like, I don't know the kind of quote unquote value of someone because before if someone would contact them and be like oh you know do you want to sponsor me or whatever yeah and a brand could be like oh like let me see your stuff or whatever but literally you could just send them a message saying hey what's up and then they can look on your page and be like holy shit this guy's like really good or this guy's got yeah, a big fully. following or oh, look yeah at exactly what that guy's doing over ramps or whatever and they can yeah. instantly be like oh okay and they've got an idea they don't have to go searching for it or wait for it or before you know i don't know things like sponsor yeah 100 like, like it's that, all so. it's kind of like a portfolio in a way like yeah for, for each of us yeah which is yeah. cool and like i didn't i definitely didn't hit them up in the beginning to asking for a sponsorship i was just totally reaching out like keep keep doing what you're doing this is sick like if i if i can get some somewhere i'll buy some like i think i even messaged saying do you know anywhere i could still order order some wheels and then they like hit me up like oh we'll send you some man like yeah, so I was like super stoked. Yeah, it's wild. So when did when did they first tell you that you were going to get a pro wheel with them? Um, it would have been midway through last year. Was like when Rob, the guy, uh, one of the owners, he hit me up that they wanted to do that, and uh, yeah, it was like I don't know, I was blown away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not that long ago. Like that's like seven, nah. eight months, nine months. Nine yeah. Months. Yeah, something like that. Probably, I can't remember exactly what month it was. It might have been, even been like August time, but um, right. yeah. And it was, uh, it was like, a, I don't know, I had this weird spell of, of kind of thinking of things and then they would happen, just like really random stuff. And I was just like, oh man, it'd be cool if like one day like a conjure, like conjure would be down to do a pro wheel or something. Like, I don't know, I've got to push myself a bit more, skate a bit harder and stuff. And then I think literally the next morning I woke up to a message like, hey, we want to, put your name on the next wheel i was like what is going on so, so you tell me as you you imagined it and made it happen you've got you've got it's not yeah. psychic abilities it's uh oh god manifested it yeah that's yeah <laughs> yeah I can't remember fully um <laughs> right that's pretty cool who did you were you responsible for like, the design of the wheel or did they or did you exchange ideas or did they just go you know what do you think of this um so they 
they like because I'm a I'm I'm a graphic designer by trade and they kind of knew that I could do it but I really like um Brian he's the guy that does all their designs I really like the style that he does and also he's done all the all the designs so far so I was like I really wanted him to to do it um but I just sketched down some concepts that I had um and then was just like communicating with them and, and um so between myself Brian uh Rob Harrington and Sean we kind of whittled down the design into like what it was finally like color wise and everything like that so okay yeah but it was like it was a long it was like a a lot of different ideas and a lot of like different color ideas and stuff like that so but we got there in the end yeah and beginning to end in less than a year that's yeah fully when i talk to other skaters like some of their some products can take an absolute lifetime to ever you know oh man yeah physical end and 100 so, um yeah. yeah it's pretty crazy um and I love the section. So I've got a few, well, I want to talk about the skating, but mm. you put in like a little kind of, I don't know what you would call it, like a little like timeline bit in between the two sections of skating. Yeah. And there's a bit where someone gets, well, I'm guessing it's like you get hit by a car and you've put in like a clip of it. Is, did that happen in real life? Yeah. I mean, that's not the actual clip. That was oh, like, yeah, because like if, you, if you're filming yeah. yourself getting hit by a car, that would be pretty insane yeah i would have put that up ages ago like get like viral <laughs> shit i don't know but um yeah no like back in 2016 um i was just skating on my p rail out the front like in the road um like on a sunday arvo and uh I, like a drunk drunk guy who was like speeding down the road like it's a 40 40 kilometer an hour zone um on my street and he was doing like 80 and he just because my my street kind of comes over a hill and I'm like kind of at the top of the hill and he's just like smashed it from the bottom and I did it like a top sole luckily I was trying like, like other tricks and I just like was like I'll just do a top sole landed fake he looked up and there was just this car like boom yeah and like I had about two seconds to realize like I'm gonna get hit by this car what do they do in the movies they roll on the bonnet and I tried to roll but I jumped too high and try, I went try into the <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i got totally messed up like i did like two flips and land on my face like 30 meters away from my house so, i mean not not to be too blunt about it but <laughs> what the hell are you doing skating a p-rail in the middle of the road on a 40 oh like a yeah i should explain like uh, yeah um my like whole area where we live is like really quiet like we don't have pathways on the side of the street we just have the road and then driveways okay. like it's yeah it's like a really residential area it's like normally you see a car coming and they like stop and they're like right. sometimes I ask you what you're doing like yeah that kind of deal but yeah so and the weirdest thing is this dude who who hit me like 30 minutes before that he was driving the other way and he stopped to chat so he knew i was there and which is even more weird like yeah yeah but um and it was a hit and run like he he smashed me and then he he drove off nice so, yeah. classy okay mm. almost killed a guy just leave him there yeah i mean i was i was a kind of okay um like i would like i didn't didn't have i wasn't like just laying on the floor like dead i kind of stood up and was like holy shit and like kind of just ran back to my house and yeah stopped halfway to like make sure i wasn't running on like a broken leg you know through adrenaline or something like that yeah but, yeah. Were you, yeah were you wearing a helmet back then i uh, like i always i've pretty much always skated with a helmet and for whatever reason like that time i wasn't like oh. i was just wearing a beanie <laughs> And shorts, okay. like yeah, nothing. It so was like summer. Was, I was just. What was the damage, or was like, was there much? Did you have to go to hospital? Um, yeah, like I broke my shoulder, and my shoulder was out of like way out of place. Um, and then the majority of it was like heaps of crazy cuts and like glass because I hit the windscreen. Um, so like I had this massive cut that went like under my kneecap, like through under my kneecap, and like all down my leg, and my elbow was all like smashed up, and my nose was like sideways like broken and yeah it was, so pretty, it was he, like a, he, it was a proper like hit, yeah he did yeah. a good job yeah he, he mm, managed to mm. mess up several areas of your body okay yeah yeah proper slammed into <laughs> how, yeah how long did that take to recover from uh i was in hospital for like four four nights i think if i remember right correctly yeah four nights and then just kind of like a month and a half two months of chilling like seriously chilling i didn't skate for two months definitely right yeah, that yeah. sounds that sounds brutal. Did they ever mm. catch the guy? Yeah, they did. It was like so it's like a crazy thing. So he like he's like hit me and 
and we're like two driveways down by this stage um and then i've like stood up looked at him and then he's driven off with this smashed windscreen and like a dented car and i was just there like oh my god ran home and then got to my front door and mum's come out because she's heard the like screech of the tires and stuff and then i was like i just got hit by a car like what the hell is going on and then i realized like my phone and stuff were like down at the end of the driveway so i was like oh i gotta go get my phone i don't know i was like a bit dazed and confused and by the time i got back down the end of my driveway there was like 50 people around from like all the houses that had heard it and one of the people who eventually got there was like this guy's girlfriend who he was abusing and she came there to tell the police that it was like to dob him in so that it was like her way of getting out of it because what he'd done is he'd just like driven down and then gone back around a different way to like where he lived which is apparently around the corner and he was trying to like clean my blood off his car and so she's like grabbed this rag and then like gone yeah came came around that's quite fortunate but well it would be kind of hard it would be kind of hard to hide a smash windscreen like if you hit someone with a car it's gonna look pretty obvious but the fact that (laughs) Yeah, he's not very good. He's not very good at getting away with it if he just lived around the cook because you're like, the, yeah, the chances nah, exactly. of someone, either a neighbor or a family member, walking past and being like, well, that car looks, that car looks like it's hit something. Yeah. And someone Rob's, re- like, Rob's just been hit just by been a hit. car. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It was like the weirdest thing. And like, yeah, you know, like, I, I don't know. It was, it was just one of those like crazy situations, especially the fact that he drove by like and talked to me before. It was like, so, it was so weird. Also, but, um, how, how drunk can you get in 30 minutes like if he drove past it oh, he was him? already like he, oh, he was right, on okay. like when i was talking to him beforehand like when he drove off i was like that guy's like he's not even drunk like i'm pretty sure he was on something else so right, who knows okay. but yeah but yeah they got him anyway and he, he he went to prison i don't know what he's doing now hopefully living a better life <laughs> we can only hope um, yeah is that is that like the worst injury you've had skating or um I'd say that was like the one mentally like pretty hefty. Um, other injuries, just like I shat, I kind of shattered my left wrist, which is why I always wear a, like a wrist guard. Um, just like a dumb fall doing a kink rail. Uh, and it was like a kink rail with like dirt down one side and then a pathway. And um, like I, I was kind of bailing into the dirt. This is like years and years ago. I was bailing into the dirt and rolling down like the hill to the pathway. And then I, I, it was like, I was trying to do a sweat stance down it and I did it, but I did it really sketchy. And I re- it was like, re- I don't know, I shouldn't have been trying and I couldn't really like do the trick, but I was like, I did it and I landed it sketchy. And then my friend was like, oh man, you should, you're here. Like you should do it again. You're going to get home, watch the clip and not be happy with it. Like you're in the moment. I'd already split my shin open on like a fence that was in the landing and stuff. And then I just went for one and like went to the dirt and my feet just dug in and I just fell like, forwards you know how you like put your hands down to like tumble over yourself and my hand like where the pathway was my hand kind of hit it and like I just rolled over and it just like exploded all the ligaments and stuff so that's been like like that's about as much as I get out of it now going that way this way oh, sweet but nice that way. Oh, oh, yeah if you've been blamed yeah. for any amount of time people have like that kind of thing because I've got the yeah you always got like cooked wrists or something so yeah I've got that arm that straightens and then oh damn that's it. I don't know. Did you see the Chris Edwards uh, Jump Street podcast where he's like, oh, this, yeah. is, this is all the movement I've got. I only get like, what did he say? He said something like 60 or 80% movement. And I was like, man, you're lucky. I've got like 40% yeah. movement. Like, Damn. Did you did you break it or like how, how was um, that? I came off a handrail. Uh, you know, like sometimes you slip out, you just slide down in your ass. And I was yeah. sliding down the rail mass and my one of my back one of my legs like swung under the rail and caught a support oh, and just like pitched me down the stairs oh like because yeah yeah because you're not expecting it because you think you're safe i was like oh i've yeah. missed but i've you know i'm just sliding down the rail i'm fine and then because it happened so quick i just stuck my hand out and my arm like s- snapped like the other way <laughs> fucking hell and we phoned the ambulance and they thought it was dislocated so they just they just tried to like they basically just oh. gave me i think it was like laughing gas or whatever and um just tried to snap it back in but what oh no but it was like broken yeah so the paramedics thought they were just jamming it back in but what they were doing was breaking the ends off both of the bones so they basically broke the ends off 
yeah, both bones that are joined make up the elbow. Oh my and then God. and the guy was like, Yeah, this is this is a war zone. Um, that's crazy i didn't know they would like allowed to normal i mean in australia normally they won't do anything until they've x-rayed it because like even if it's dislocated it could be some nerves yeah, or whatever it was, yeah it was well and yeah and then i had to have like eight hours of surgery and they had to get Holy some guy shit. in from a different hospital because it was in such bad shape and my partner's a doctor um, and she was a medical student at the time and she was looking at the mm. x-rays and she's like you're lucky they could have you know justifiably like like, it. and i was oh, like man. what and well yeah like fuck. that's probably a good so, thing to remember like when you're like oh, i only get this but at least yeah, still like, yeah. yeah. um yeah really. yeah and for the first six months i couldn't even get that much movement i was basically just walking about oh, with it at like 90 degrees so yeah i know Were all the ligaments like ruined as well just like, ever, I, so much like the arm was basically like spaghetti at the top it just got <laughs> so thin it just destroyed all the muscles and because yeah. there's not as much movement you can't build it back up like you can't yeah you can go to the gym and work out as much as i want it's not gonna it's never gonna so yeah yeah it's just like yeah permanent um yeah, yeah like i did all the phys- i went to like loads of physical therapists and stuff and they're like yeah that's that's not getting better like that's oh man you're lucky you're lucky you've got that and i was like all right cool. that's so, um yeah i know i know that pain well so mm-hmm. so you never but in, in the video, you put up a, a thing with a, like a cast on a foot. So on my leg? Yeah. Yeah, I broke my leg like years ago, back in um, 2013. Just just as I like picked up the REMS Australia sponsorship, like three days later, I was at a contest and I, I dislocated my foot and then spiral fractured my leg. And then I think my foot, like it like dislocated and relocated, but in doing so, it yeah, broke my leg. How do you dislocate uh, a foot? Like it's inside the skate. Surely the skate is yeah. So like stopping I'd, that from happening. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like there was like a ramp going this way and a lander over here, and it, like a lot of people, it was like a um, was it the Australian Rolling Open two thousand and thirteen, and a lot of it was like a thing to like transfer um, from the quarter to the bank, and uh, I dropped in, and it was like in the um, the qualifiers. Or the semifinals or whatever um you want to call it and i like i dropped in get in speed for it and i was like i'll do a 180 and then i was like no nah, no nah, i want to make finals like, i'll do a five and then like kind of like three meters before the ramp i was like fuck it just do a nine you'll be sweet and i got to seven landed and like kept spinning and my my front wheel on my left foot kind of caught like the between the wood and the concrete like the little metal thing and i just like sat on my like on the outside of my sole plate like fully sponged it and I knew straight away, like, yeah, it was pretty, pretty average. And, uh, yeah. So like, I've still got metal, like a metal plate and seven screws in my ankle. That's just been there since then. That, so that's what the cast thing was. That sounds yeah. horrible. That sounds yeah. Horrible. That like that clip I filmed all those years ago when I was like, I'll make a recovery edit or something again. I just like never did. So like I had that footage around and figured that's, it. Yeah. That's well. pretty cool. Yeah. Cause there's other mm. archive stuff in there, like you opening up yeah. the skates and stuff. And that's really, that's very cool that you have that. Cause not many mm. people have that at their disposal. So that is, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Even the car thing like that. I filmed that like after I was skating again, after the car thing and I was going to like, you know, do a thing with that. And I just never did. So yeah, that was just like my mate James. And I was like, we'll just reenact it. Like film it in reverse. Yeah. You know, like do it in reverse. And then, reverse the clip and i'd literally just have had that footage sitting on my computer for like four years and never done anything with it so so for as long as you work that well yeah yeah that yeah it's awesome to have that so as long for as long as you've been skating you've basically had a camera in your hand as well yeah kind of pretty much i'd say not really like a when i was younger like i just would borrow like mum and dad's like um you know those little like digital yeah i don't know, DV, like, I don't know dv tapes yeah. Or something. yeah 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 um and then i got like a video camera for my for my birthday at some point which was just a little sony handy cam yeah like with the tapes yeah eventually got a fish eye for it but i made a few videos but nothing like crazy and like there they were on youtube i don't even know what happened to them i think like they were on youtube and then like i must have deleted them or done something with them but i can't find them anymore on a whole uh, old channel uh then I got a DSLR when everyone was getting DSLRs, you know, and everyone had like I, I, I remember like the phase well. Yep. A mm. lot of time and that lapses. Rocking on eight mil fisheye. Yeah, that whole like I had yeah. that. Um and I was like making videos then. Um, how many how many of your videos had time lapses in them? 
Actually, none. Because I didn't that, even that, know how good. to do it. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> like I could, yeah. So, uh, I mean, maybe I like tried to do one and just sped it up. But yeah, it wasn't like a legit time lapse. Uh, and then, yeah, I had that for ages. And then I was filming like a street, like my first kind of street thing. And I was just watching more and more edits and I was like, I kind of just hate these DSLR things. Like I wanted a, I wanted a camera with a zoom again. Yep. Um, it wasn't even about like having the, the fat fish eye or anything. It was just about having the zoom. And so I bought like a, an, another handy cam, which was sweet, but it was tape. It was like HD, but tapes. Okay. Um, and yeah, like, I, yeah, I, I like, it was a good camera, but like tapes suck. Like seriously. Suck. It's, it's a lot of work to get mm. the footage from the camera to the, and you know, I know people that swear by it, like John Lee and yeah. um, Kevin Brinkman and stuff like that. But I'm like, yeah, why would, why would you make life harder for yourself when you yeah. don't have to? Yeah. I mean, I can understand if you're filming on a VX and you want that, yeah. that exact like thing then then the effort's all worth it because like vx footage just has this like way about it just looks so good but if you're just if you're filming hd like i mean no one would probably do it now but if you're filming hd on tapes like you just wait you're just using up your life like yeah. going home and capturing it and like i don't know nah so then i eventually got like uh the camcorder off dom west it was like okay. his old one and he was selling it and i was just like Yo, I'm, I'm guessing it's an that. HPX yeah. then or something like that. It's a HMC. It's like the same. All oh, right. Yeah. It's the same deal. But it SD uses card. SD cards. Yeah. 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 Which is handy as. So. Oh, yeah. Because P2 cards. Yeah. I've got an HPX and P2 cards take a really long time to figure out how they work. Like I must have mm. ruined. Oh, I must have filmed for like between six months and a year before I finally figured out like all the quirks to it that you need to know. Yeah, make. and you got they're kind of expensive. Well, they were like when I was looking into it ages ago. Like P2 yeah. cards. I mean, they last the ages though, right? Yeah. That's the whole deal. Like they don't lose like data or they, something. They do, but it just takes a really long time to do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you don't know, it's fine if you know other people who use them, but literally I didn't know anyone else, like even just in Scotland, in dark, I had one. So I, yeah, I'm just doing like YouTube tutorials and I'm like, why, why is this shit not working on the like oh, man. platform or the footage was coming out wrong and I couldn't figure out why and like, yeah. all the settings that you just don't. Or if it's like a trick you filmed and you can't, you can't like, it's kind of like gammy and you can't use it. Yeah, or, well, recorded yeah, it. Yeah, it was usually other people yeah. I was screwing over. I had to break it to them and be like, oh, you, know, you know that trick you took an hour to do? And mm. I just, you know, wasted your entire afternoon. Yeah, um, yeah. that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what a feeling trying to tell the homie you missed the shot or something. Yeah, just hate yourself. Um, mm. Getting back to the section. So, loved all the gaps in it because you don't see as many people doing gaps these days but my yeah. favorite one was the i love the line i love like the one foot line you did so it's got like the oh i can't remember what it is now but it's on it's on the ledge on the left i think it's like a white ledge you do like the fast tap it's a fast tap mac oh like the fast mac to fish to yeah. fakie and then the little like halfway squiggle i don't even know what it's called there's a switch up at the end yeah um, yeah and then zero mac top acid yeah yeah because you also you don't see many people doing those either, like the fast tap to Macchio. Because who was it was talking mm. about it? Oh, I watched Wax Toaster with J Lord Santos. I don't know if you've ever watched any of those. I um, have watched a few. I haven't seen that one though. But yeah, they, I've watched a few of those. They call those the Carson Shuffle because um, uh -huh. oh god, I can't remember his name. He used to be on Valo and then he was on Shadow. Uh, Michael Bedoza used to do them. Used oh, to do yeah. them top side. Used to do them like damn back side. Like a Backside Back fast slide to fish brain, fish. yeah, and apparently they do them alley up as well. Oh. Yeah, that's that's all kinds of danger. Backside fast slide to fish, and he would do them on yeah, like, he would do them on that. That's crazy rails. Um, yeah, damn. But they called it they called it the Carson Shuffle because apparently it was just a popular trick in their area. But I always remember Louis Zamora doing them first, and yeah, like, and uh, and like Richie, Richie did a bunch. Like he used to do them all the time. Richie Eisler, yeah, uh, yeah. But, Oh god, I saw Louis Moore do it in like the first Senate video, Day of the Rope. Yeah, that's what I remember it from. So like yeah, fast like the max, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there was there was yeah. There was Yeah, yeah. they're a fun one, man. I, I feel like they're like a it's like that, uh it's like a little you know, it's just essentially it's just a soul, but you're just like doing it at one foot at a time in a way. Like, it, it is, it's like yeah. it's like a step on soul, but the opposite way. So it's like it's like Hard yeah, you're step stepping on. on wrong yeah it's like hard <laughs> yeah. step on yeah yeah um yeah i feel like there's areas to play with it like you could do it 
you could do it acid I, I haven't seen anyone do that yet like the same thing but instead you like that is true yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. there's so many like ways to explore even just mm. doing the standard tricks like i don't know just doing a savannah but like stepping on and stepping on the hard way or yeah there's so many ways you could utilize that trick that haven't yeah, man. been there's used yet yeah, un- yeah. yeah. untapped and potential i'm also beginning to believe that brisbane doesn't have many spots because i keep I'm seeing spots like <laughs> reoccur in your edits now. And I'll be like, oh, I've seen that one before. Like the yellow yeah. rail where you do. So oh, I've that's just my favorite rail. <laughs> I've seen you do it before where you do top yeah. soul true fish on it. But this time you're like, yeah. oh, I'll do top soul true fish back. Was it back to soul? But yeah, true soy al. True, or as that, someone commented, it. true that soy sauce, which I kind of yeah, like. Soy sauce. That's, that's, that's good. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. So like, yeah, you can tell when you start seeing spots reoccur, you're like, oh, either they don't have many spots or that one's, yeah, that one's got a... Yeah, a, a that's just that like heart. a classic spot that, I don't know, only only really rollerbladers go there. But um, yeah, years ago, I went there when I was filming my first thing for REMS and uh, I did like a topsoil true fish on it. And then a few like years later, I went and did like a topsoil TTS to true soul. And then this time I kind of wanted to, like combine those two and right. put it together in one. So yeah. Um what's your what's your favorite trick in, in the section or what one did you have to work hardest to get? Um to work hardest for there's a few. Actually that that um that line that was like just on a flat rail with a air with a plane in the background. And I did like top acid, true X. Yeah. Then out and then yeah. That took ages because like I don't even know. I just kept like kept just like screwing up the first thing. Like I'd lock the top acid and just be like weird. And then it's one of those spots where to get enough speed, you had to skate a fair while, like go around. And, um, and it was super hot. And like, every time I would like fuck up the top acid, it was just like, I'd have to go around again. And uh, it would just get like harder and harder, the more like the more tries. So then I like stop, chill out, try again. Like, and I remember even saying to Josh, I was like, Cause he was filming. I was like, like literally this is like the last time I want to try this. I'm dripping. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm drenched. Like I don't. And then I got it and I was like, thank fuck. Like, yeah, I'm done. I'm so, not coming back for this. We don't have to but, um, all over again. Yes. Yeah. That I'm trying to think of other, like that one. I just remember that one just took ages. Cause I'm, yeah, I was just being retarded, but um, I'm trying to think of like tricks that yeah. took. I don't even know like that. Yeah. I guess like a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them kind of either didn't, didn't, it was more just like timing kind of going to the spot or like we'd run out of daylight or something like that. There was one trick I tried that didn't even make it. And I tried for like three hours and I just got flexed for three hours straight and I couldn't land it. And, uh, and then it was like, I really wanted to do it and put it in and I just pushed it off. Cause I knew it's like one of those spots where like when you miss, you really get, you just like yeah, get injured get, get, and get i was work. like i'll just wait until the end because i don't want to like deal with that again and um yeah i just ne- like never had a chance to go get it but i'll i'll go back and try and do it again another time the next that can be the next pro wheel edit it can be yeah yeah, no. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> hopefully um, I don't know. yeah I, yeah i think it's kind of wild that it's companies like conjure and sick urethane and oh god I can't remember like other ones off the top of my head like Mm. and i kind of feel like they're like disruptors of the industry because before it felt like there was only you know two very clear paths to getting a pro product and it was like you either had to do really well in competitions or you had to know Mm. someone that filmed or get in with someone or yeah friends with like people that you know ran the companies or you had to get the seal of approval from you know pros you know that people yeah definitely you know, Dominic Sagona and people like Dre Pill and stuff got the seal of approval from Louis and uh, Randy Spicer running second regime. Or you had, you know, like Mind Game, like Mind Game brought in like Omar Wysong and, you know, made him like legitimized him basically by putting yeah. him in a video and giving him pro yeah. and things like that. And now I feel like you can get random people like Rob, Rob Harrington, who you mm. know, isn't really known in the industry and then comes along, but because he's got such a good vision and a strong idea and good yeah, marketing exactly. and good branding and yeah. Know, and just passionate about it. Yeah. And making yeah. wheels, not just wheels. He's not making them disposable items. He's making them collector's items. Kind of like mm. 
hundred percent. Not on the same scale as like Senate back in the day, but it's got a very similar kind of vibe to it. Like this is something you want to treasure and behold. Yeah, exactly. But they're also it's getting like pro. We- Sorry, what were you going to say? No, no, I was just going to say like even like when you're saying about Senate, like the Senate keychain was like a thing, and like with the wheels, like if you got the pre-order bundle, they came with a keychain, and yeah. just like the little added things that I think. Like most rollerbladers, like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'll keep this. Like, you know, it's like memorabilia. I think a lot of people are down with it. Yeah. And just giving wheels to people that either are not even on other teams or are only flow for other teams. And it kind of just says that because I've long been of the opinion that the sponsorship system is broken. It doesn't work. Mm. It works if you're yeah, flow man. or you're am because all you want is free stuff. And you get free yeah, stuff. Sure. That's, that's great. It's a win-win. You know, the company gets promo you get the things you need to skate yeah exactly go beyond that it's broken it doesn't work you know it's yeah. not it's not a fair relationship sometimes the company loses out because the skater gets a pro skate and doesn't fulfill their yeah. obligations that's it they're like sweet i'm, I'm done <laughs> yeah. yeah or sometimes they get a skate and you know they work their ass off and it sells well and they promo mm-hmm. it and they put in all the work and they don't get anything in return yeah this the whole system i just believe needs rethought but yeah, with brands sure. like conjure it's given people a chance that other brands aren't giving a chance like you know you had one sean had one um mm. like ryan parker as well ryan he parker as well yeah. and anthony gallagos and stuff like that and these are all people that other brands haven't taken chances on yeah so yeah just, it's cool i feel blessed <laughs> that's what i mean i'm just kind of wondering what your thought is on that because like you're not a big name in blading and yet you've got a sold out pro wheel. Yeah. Um, I think, I guess it's like you were saying, like back, like back in the day, it was like you had to know someone or you had to win contests. And I think that like back then, like we definitely had, I guess, more kind of like regular big contests that yeah. if you would win, like people, you people would instantly know your name. And it wasn't just like winter clash, which is like massive. It was like, there was winter clash, there was bitter cold, there was a hoedown, like those things. And I feel like people who placed in those things would be like really well known, but also we had magazines with, you know, like articles about people and DVDs coming out. It was like, because it's a DVD, it was like people had a section and a lot of people would watch those things over and over again. They buy a DVD and watch it like constantly. Whereas now with the digital age, it's like, there's a lot of people breaking out. So you can be like breaking out in like a section and like if the people that follow you, they know you really well and they like, like what you're doing, but there's like a whole other section that hasn't even seen you yet. Cause they just haven't found that like branch of the tree in a way. Yeah. So I like that. I like that. Like there's now brands out there like Conjure that are, you know, definitely given like, yeah, given, given people like me a chance. Cause it's like dreams coming true for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you do any like the guys on Conjure get royalties from the Pro Wheel, or how does like is there a system set up? How does that work? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Like I mean, I don't know about the guys previously, um, but I, I got some royalties. I think for the um, they even listed it on their website. So for the pre order bundle, it was ten dollars for every bundle I got, which is like crazy royalties. That's a lot, yeah, yeah. That's that's so higher like, than most. Not most. That's higher than some very well known skate brands give to hmm. the riders. Yeah, I was like super, and I didn't even I didn't even know or expect that there was going to be royalties. I was just like super hyped to have my name on a wheel. And then about two weeks before it came out, Rob just said, sent a message like, "Yo, man, this is how we're doing it," like with a like a breakdown and everything. So, yeah, um, so yeah, ended up getting some royalties, which I'm like, he actually sent it through yesterday for all because they've sold all of their they've sold all the wheels. They'll be available in stores still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as they're concerned, they've like they're sold out so yeah the brand is so yeah. what you're saying is the victoria bitters are on you that's what's that's what's yeah happening. 100 <laughs> percent. there's a skate contest on saturday in like two days so yeah nice yeah i'm gonna, um, I'm gonna hook up the boys <laughs> that's also very cool that there's that level of transparency like he's like here's here's what's happening here's the breakdown here's yeah oh yeah he broke it down like down to a t like this is what it costs to make the wheels this is what it costs to make the packaging this is what like shipping costs Da, 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 da. like this is what we sell them to the shops for and this is like it was like super transparent like yeah yeah I think and it was just like a, yeah i woke up to like a message like that 
and it, I previously I was like, I'm just getting a wheel with my name on it, like super, super stoked about that. So it was like a cherry on top for sure. Yeah. Do you know how many sets of wheels they made? Uh, I have no idea, actually. No idea. Yeah. I could, I mean, I could do the maths if I yeah, reverse yeah. engineered their thing. I mean, I could just ask them, but I, yeah, I can't yeah. quite remember. Yeah. I know they did a little bit more. So they'd like, they, it's, it's not like massive amounts. Um, but then they did heaps for the, they doubled their amount for the Conjure Basics, which was like their previous wheel. Right. Um, Cause they were sending more to different stores to just get it out there. And then I know with, uh, with my wheel, they did a bit more than like the previous pro wheels, I think from what, from, from memory. Yeah. Cause they're always selling out. So you've got to be thinking they're making bigger batches yeah. each time. Cause if they're getting rid of them all. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I know that they definitely like up to the batch this time. And I think with um, like, they're going to keep probably up in the, yeah. up in the batch for sure. Um, they should. Cause like, they're, yeah, they're great wheels and they do sell out like pretty quickly. So. Um, yeah. I'm desperate to get a hold of a set and I, mm. but annoyingly you can't get them in the UK and I've contacted Rob and been like, you know, like even offered to be like, Oh, I could like help you distribute these if you can work something out. Yeah. But, just pay basically paying for like the postage from the US to here on top of the wheels, it would basically just double the price of the wheels. And I'm like, that's just insane to pay that for yeah, something man. that you're going to trash on the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, and I mean, at the moment as well with like COVID and all that, like shipping prices are like way higher and everything takes way longer. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully one day and everything will be back to normal. Yeah, the UK stupidly voted on Brexit, so that's also added import duties from anywhere in Europe. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. just we've we've made some very clever decisions in the UK in the past. Past. Yeah, because Lino's got some in his shop. He's like constantly stocking conjure wheels. But even like you're saying, you guys aren't like part yeah, of Europe just, anymore. So. Yeah, just get shafted when they arrive in the country. Oh, you're like, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Tory government. You've you've done a really good job on us. Um, yeah, man. So you, yeah, you mentioned earlier, so you were riding for rims because I couldn't, I didn't, I know that you released rims edits, but I didn't know whether you were like just supporting the brand or a big fan. So you were actually sponsored by them at one point. Still. Yeah. So yeah, still like riding for rims, but it's like the way, so when I was, when like back in 2012, 2013, I was filming like a street part. And then I, there was a Rams Australia team. Like that was when CJ was on the team. Hayden, uh, Hayden Golder, right? Yeah, Hayden Golder. Yeah. And because he, like he used to take photos for the, he used to take photos yeah. for the print mag because he got me some good ones of Tom Coley Sowery back in the, back when Steve Tom Lord. was still, he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, man. For sure. He's, um, it's, yeah, I think he's still skating, but, um, not as much as he once was, which is yeah. a shame because he's, he's talented for sure um and i was so basically i messaged to um jenny Logue, who oh no is, way yeah yeah so she manages the, the the teams for like the rems and raises distribution down here she also works at, at a bayside blades which is like yeah. the biggest skate shop in melbourne uh, and i just messaged her saying hey jenny like i've, I've put together a street edit would be would it be cool if i put a rems logo on there obviously like i'm skating rems um in the in the video and she was like oh it's so good that you like message me we were talking with the team like we really wanted to put you on the team why don't we just make this like a you're like and your official welcome, kind yeah. of like yeah welcome edit so i did um and i was super hyped like i dreamt of being sponsored and on the rems team for like so many years um and it was kind of this weird thing where like for a few years i was like yeah like like it's the thing but i would never hear from like anyone other than like jenny or or, or like cj or hayden and stuff like that but um like I, I like remember a, sending, yeah, like sending the video. Well, it's, like to a, the dis- page. it's not like a sponsorship sponsorship. It's like a distribution sponsorship kind of. So yeah, you, exactly. you don't even know if like Cato knows you're on the team or whatever. Yeah, yeah. For ages, like I just would like send my edits to the Rems page on Facebook and be like, "Hey, I'm like I made this," and they would just like reply <laughs> two months later, like "Thanks," dude, or something like. Didn't even know who I was, and I was like, I was a kid, so I was just like, "Yo, like I'm still yeah. buzzing, like I'm hyped," and then um yeah fast forward until like 2019 and i'd like i'd like put out a, a couple of street edits since then like always like tagging rams like everything i post was always tagging rams like never really got any like response from it but um yeah back in 2019 i got a message from the rams like page from carto like just 
we like had messaged a few times before, but yeah, leading up to that, to that, like not much. And then it's just a message being like, Hey man, like you're killing it. We love you. We love your traveling and stuff like that. We've, we've chatted with the team. I really want to put you on like the, the REMS team, like a, official team, I guess at the time, which would have been with like Yozank and, um, and Weedsman. Uh, and then I was like super hyped on that. And then I like, didn't hear anything since then that was like in october 2019 yeah um but when, when it started yeah. to go quiet yeah yeah so yeah but basically like I, i've been on the like i un, like the rems australia team which is essentially rems and and razors send extra pairs of skates to australia and then they let the distributor choose who's on the who represents the brand down here because obviously the australian distributor has a better idea of who's like skating mm -hmm. Yeah, and stuff like that so it's been like that for years but it's weird because like when like yo zank and uh and michael weren't like they weren't even like getting parts last year well and i was like hitting yeah. up jenny just like hey jenny I, I like my skates are beat do you have any in a size seven she's like yep and like two days later boom and i was I, like but that's different because they no because they would have stock it just means they have stock that they have yeah sold exactly or whatever whereas yeah. in europe like yeah i'd imagine there's a much bigger market for skating in europe because bleeding is bigger yeah. in europe so they're like yeah well, no sure. we've all the shops have taken ours we don't have stuff for you yeah also i'm blessed that i'm like a size like seven skate and like there there's always stock in that so all yeah, right is that like a... is that not a big big comment because i see when i see on these blade trade like things i'm like mm. look at all these people with these tiny ass feet like i'm a size 10 uk so i'm yeah yeah damn see i always think the other thing i'm like damn why has everyone got like size 10 feet i'm like trying to find old rims in like <laughs> in like size seven but i can't like I'm, yeah nothing right, but okay um, and yeah. so you've got to be like the only person left on rims then no there's another dude down here called phil phil moss he's like a ledge shredder and um yeah he's he's also on the team so i guess i i, I can't even really say that it's like the rems team I would love to say that it is, but it's like we're we're, we're representing REMS in Australia. I mean, so. even Haffy isn't riding them. That's that's when you know, know. it's like a nail in the coffin when the yeah. most dedicated rider ever is rocking razors. Yeah, man. I was like, I saw that, and I was like, I, I was just happy to see Haffy like skating again. So yeah, yeah, it had been like years since seeing anything of him in REMS anyway. So, so mm. have you had any communication from REMS about what's going on? Because I've contacted cattle loads over the years and normally hear back from them about various stuff and when i asked him you know do you want to come on do you want to talk about rems he just went and then i never heard for about i want to say three or four months and then he just sent me a message saying hey man what's up how you doing glad you're good and i was like you didn't answer the question yeah yeah i haven't heard anything from from kato since like october 2019 and like the last message was like that they wanted to put me on the team so I've just been like, that was the last like conversation we had. And I've kind of just been hanging, but I love the skates and I'll just keep, sk I'll, I'll skate them anyway. Um, but then, yeah, I messaged um, Jeff Akers like probably a few months ago, just to be like, cause I was trying to, I was, I've been messaging Carto like, Hey man, how are you? But like no response. Yeah. Um, and I messaged yeah, Jeff and just said, Hey, just wondering if there's anything like happening, new skates coming with Rams. And he kind of hinted that there was something new coming. Um, and so I was kind of like, that's what your social media post was about. Cause I'm sure you put up something saying something new in the world. Oh no, that was just a joke. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, you. Yeah. That was on I've... April, April 1st. I that's just said, right. I got an email from Rams. Well, that's just rude. <laughs> yeah. I, but, couldn't I, don't I couldn't remember what like, date it was. It was, it was as remember, unbelievable like, as like, glancing yeah. at it right okay <laughs> so yeah 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 because it just doesn't it doesn't seem like there's anyone left in rems and literally everyone i've spoke to who was on rems is like i have had zero communication from anyone yeah. and just gave up yeah how long can you last on your current setup though like they can't have that many size seven left in stock in australia Nah, but actually like two days ago um they sent me like a new pair of skates and uh, they're just sitting like behind me, but I can't, I can't show you guys. So, as as yeah. an, a new skate. Yeah. Not just a new pair of an old skate. No, like a new one. <laughs> so, Rems, so do have, Rems do have a new skate coming out. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, they're still still alive. I don't know much about what they're going to do with it, but yeah, yeah, there you've is got to wonder. Case. You've got to wonder how they're going to promote it with no team. Yeah, I mean, I two, know, man. two skaters from Australia is not really enough. No, not at all. Like you need people in every country, and you need like yeah, people like Yozank and and Michael, like that they were like really making Rams look sick. Like and sadly, they're yeah communication man it's like i don't know it's, it's crazy see, see you've not heard but, from them at all but they've sent you a new skate that's not been released yet that's kind of way oh that was from that was through jenny like that was through jenny log again so i messaged after i messaged um jeff about it i was like all right i'm gonna message jenny see what she, she has to say and she was like yeah yeah there's some there's there's new ones in the works this is like a few months ago and then like last week i just messaged again hey any news on the new rams just like, oh, I'll, I'll check and oh actually they're this they're, they're like they're kind of ready to go. We'll get we'll get two pairs from the factory over to like to you guys, so you can you can get them early. They've so managed to keep that very up. quiet because, like, in Bladen now, with obviously the internet and everyone being really savvy, or loads and the industry being so small, and everyone or lots of people kind of knowing someone that's connected to the industry in some way, stuff like that hmm. doesn't stay a secret usually. Like, no. even Power Slide can't keep it a secret. Like all their stuff from like even. Yeah, the catalog and stuff like yeah, it's even prototypes like, from like two years previous get people already know about them because they're like, yeah, I've already seen mm-hmm. the image. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I had not seen any images of these anywhere floating on the internet. So, right. yeah, but I can I confirm there's new new rams coming out for anyone that's that's hanging. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, have you always? Have, have, I know you've skated rams for a long time, but have you always skated them, or have you have you used other models or? I skated TRS Access with my first okay. pair of skates, like the black so, ones with the fold over thingy. Yeah. So you've always yeah. liked big chunky skates. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I went to, I had them for like two years and then I was like trying to choose like a different pair of skates and I was like, I'm going to get M12s. Then I wanted Deshies. Then I wanted Shadows. Then I wanted OS. And I was like set on the Frankie OS. for like, I didn't really like know much about REMS at that time. I was still yeah. like, just like choosing skates and we went into the store with my dad and it was like the day after the all gray 07 rems had like been released okay and then uh i was just trying on the frankies and he was like those ones look better and i was like you know what they do and then I, that was it like rems since then back in 2007 so you're obviously loyal to the brand but see when things were going really quiet and all the other riders mm-hmm. were jumping ship and being quite public about it were you ever tempted yeah. to be like oh maybe i should maybe it's time to try something else or definitely man i like i, I really love how rems feel and i love the cust- like the customizability or like like how much you can customize them um to respond in different ways but mm-hmm. The thing for me is like that growing up, there was always like people like Haffy and even CJ for a while and those kinds of people that were skating in Rams and like, you know, you'd watch edits of that edits of them and then get like hyped to go try and like do stuff in Rams. And then there's, then there was just like a solid period last year where there was like no one doing anything in, in Rams. And I was kind of just like, like I'd see edits of like Broskow skating like the 909s and just being like, man, he makes them look so good. Like that, I guess they're a good skate, but like he makes them look cool, you know? And I was like, and then like just people making look skates look cool. Like, like Nils making M12s and the fifths like look sick. And like in general, just like a bunch of people, but no one like skating rems. And then I was getting a bit disheartened. And then I was like, but I like how rems skate. So Maybe I, if I just keep skating rims, maybe like I'll inspire at least one kid to keep skating rims too. Cause I believe in the skate. Definitely. I think they're a great skate. So right. I'm gonna stick with them for now anyway. Yeah. That's fair enough. Um, yeah. So most people know you from, or like, I think the kind of most popular thing I think you've had out is the neon inline section, which you got, you mm. made with Josh Nielsen in yeah. China um yeah weirdly josh has been to scotland and stayed in aberdeen with friends of mine i don't know how he yeah. ended up in aberdeen because it doesn't have a big skate scene it doesn't even really have good skate he's been parts. everywhere yeah um, he's so, like a nomad he's yeah, crazy. He, he randomly turned up at a scottish skate contest and i was like I, I think it was it was way before vine street seven rats had came out and i was like that's the guy from seven rats i know you yeah um 
Hell yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's got family here. So I don't know how he ended up in Scotland. But yeah, he stayed with a bunch of friends of mine. Um, yeah. That, that section, the production on it must have taken so long to do. You must have spent mm. weeks on After Effects yeah. because there are like billboards, there are like motion graphics all over the place. Like, yeah. How long did that take to make just in post production? Uh, that was like, so yeah, that was like a good two weeks of, but that was like, m- m- like peak coronavirus lockdown. So there was like nothing else to do. So I was literally just like in Neon, my. Neon Online came out during coronavirus. I, I thought it was. Yeah, Amazon. last year. All right. Like I came, we got evacuated from Wuhan and then I was like, just put together the footage, but all the After Effects stuff took took a while. Like it should have been quicker, but my laptop just, just couldn't deal with it, man. Like yeah. it, it sounded like I was going to freaking fly away. Like that's, as soon yeah. as I start like trying to do anything. So, I've, and like I've, that's on 720p footage. It's like tiny footage, you know, it's not. Is, it's not even that. Not I've, yeah. I've tried to do that before. I've tried to do After Effects on a Mac before. And anytime you try to do something like 3D or whatever, the computer is just like, nah, <laughs> yeah. this, this so, ren- rendering, this is going to take a day. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Basically like I would have to like do something and I couldn't really preview it. So I would just guess and like, you know, like look and then like skip a little bit and like check the timeline again and like, okay, that might be all right. Then I'd render it like fall asleep or something, wake up in the morning, check. I'm like, ah, it's like, it's wrong. Like I didn't mask it out properly. There's like redo it, re-render it. Like it took, it took a while, but yeah. Getting all the clips in, in the order with the song was fine, but then there was like, yeah a, a bunch of different like i guess all the things on top that yeah. took ages yeah i've also got no idea how you got that song through copyright on youtube like i can't believe that didn't, they didn't just go no <laughs> <laughs> well they've got that new thing on on youtube now where like you can it depends what the artist wants so like you can use pretty much any song but if you're trying to make ads uh, make money through the ad revenue then like you can't use any song basically yeah. so like the weekend He's must have set up a thing where he's like anyone can use their like m- that song on their videos, but any money they get they get through the ads on the side, like that's coming to me. Yeah. So, and I just got a little notification saying like, yeah, he gonna get all your money. I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna make any anyway. See, I, that that makes sense. I understand why artists would do that because they're like, well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You can use my stuff as long as I profit from it. What I don't understand is whether like, no, you can't use this music because why would an oh, artist man, why would an artist not want his music? Or her music to get out to as many people as but you're like someone's yeah, just like giving you free time. promo <laughs> yeah and like you think about some some things in blading like for example like sage francis is such a big name and like most rollerbladers would know a sage yeah. francis song purely based off of skating like yeah. a lot of people might not have never discovered his music and there's like a huge cult following for sage francis in blading that like is just happened because people put his music in like old videos yeah. And that could be the same with a bunch of like new artists now. Well, yeah, I can't remember who it was that joked. So, was it? Oh, yeah. Someone joked that if it wasn't for them, the faint wouldn't have became as big as they did. And someone also <laughs> joked that like Octopus Project, I think it was Lonnie Gallagher said, if it wasn't for me, Octopus Project would have sold like, I don't know, a fraction of their records or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, you never know. There's, though, got, like, there's got to be some truth to that. Yeah. Because yeah. think of all the music or bands that you love that you've discovered over the years through blading. Yeah. yeah. I, I can think or of like a band of a band, you know, like you'd go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. You, you know, know, one band and then you like find another band from that or like yeah. the, the bassist is it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. So, um, how did, so you and Josh were both out in China doing, you were doing like, is it demos for like some kind of extreme sports show yeah. or something? Yeah. So we were out in China doing these like, summer contracts that um we managed to like get onto through our a friend that had done them before right. um, and basically it's like you go to china for six months and you live at a theme park in a big dormitory full of like other foreigners that are living there and you just it was like inside the theme park there would be a skate park with a like a grandstand yeah, around yeah, it, so, it yeah. like yeah three shows a day or sometimes four shows a day um 15 minutes long and that, that was it was that seven days a week? Six days a week, yeah. Six. That's a, like three shows a day, six days a week. Like if you get hurt, those injuries are not going to heal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, they're just, don't. You're just going to keep bashing age, yourself man. over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Even like small stuff, like a blister, 
you just gotta like i mean if you like really you know you need time off they'll give you time off but like if you have like even just small things like a blister like a blister just last a month because you're skating on it all the time yeah like constantly That's- and like yeah just like if you hit your shins it's just like never gonna you know constant kind of thing so so you're just like i'm just gonna stick to spins i'm gonna stay away from grains i don't want to catch myself up on the coping yeah basically i mean we would do it like because it's shows for people you know like you, do, you don't you're trying to just like they don't know the difference between a fish brain and a front side so you just yeah, do front so side just, just do royals and everything yeah you're like yeah royal, exactly <laughs> yeah but you know like the the park we were working at in 2019 was like a really good like well-built skate park but the one we were working at for the years before that was like super ghetto bamboo like wood it wasn't even like plywood it was like woven bamboo that when it would rain would like get all soggy and then start splintering yeah and like oh we yeah we just had her and the jump box the kicker was like not even like it would it would make you drift and it was really skinny and like yeah those times with like 360 over people and you coming around and like you you know you like you're gonna get you're one like, foot on the lander the, the and the ramp's like, not there oh no the ramp is yeah. not there <laughs> yeah yeah like it was um yeah, it was it was a gnarly park to skate. But the good thing is, if you could do tricks on that, and you got used to that. Everything else felt like felt yeah, it's, it's kind of like training. You must come back after it, and everyone's like, "Man, Rob's just shitting over everyone here." He's like- <laughs> yeah. We always used to joke like, if you know Dragon Ball Z, there's like the hyperbolic time chamber, where like they go and it's just this white space, and they train and train and train, and it's like they they're like there for six years training. They come back and it's only been like three minutes in the real world or something right. Rose used to joke that it's like it's like that you just go away for six months skate every day all day and come back and like yeah just like level up a little bit yeah because you just get uh, it just becomes second nature and everything after a while everything must just feel so natural because you're like well i've got these skates on all the time it kind of reminds me yeah. of when you're a teenager and thinking back i remember like walking to school and walking would feel weird because i'd spent so many hours on skates like eight hours a day like every day and then yeah, walking you're like, I just started, wanna... yeah walking started yeah. to feel stranger than skating <laughs> you were like trying yeah to yeah you're like, when you were turning roll, the corner like, or whatever. Yeah. yeah yeah fully man um, yeah you definitely get in this if you like realized it while i was there like if you skate every day even if you do the same tricks or whatever like it just the fact that you're on your skates every day you become so like they become so like attached to as a part of you so then yeah. you go like oh, i've never done this trick before i'm gonna try it and generally like if you've been skating every day you'll get it pretty quickly because it's just feels more like natural everything comes more naturally so what was it like living in the actual grounds of the theme park though that must have felt like being in the circus like you're like cool i'm i'm in the place where i work it just reminds me of like i don't know traveling circuses that come to your town and all the people live on site and yeah yeah it's like the best the best time like some of the best times of my life living in like in it's called happy valley is the theme parks it's like a series of theme parks throughout china and there's like yeah we were just in tangin for like four years for like summers i guess yeah and it's like there's just this big dormitory building with like all the all the chinese people that are performers and then there was like a foreigner level which was just our team which is just me and josh and two bmx riders and then 18 ukrainian dancers or russian dancers sometimes right and like and uh some like sometimes it'd be like brazilian dancers and uh some guys from the philippines that were like in a marching band and we just like party like constantly that's what i was gonna say I would imagine it'd be quite wild with the Westerners because most Westerners, when they move to different countries, like yep. to cut loose. So, oh yeah, what was that like? Man, yeah, it was like definitely partying pretty much every day unless we forced ourselves not to. And sometimes like I wouldn't want to party or Josh wouldn't want to party, but like the other one would and just be like, I'm just going to sit here and drink this beer. You don't have to do it. And then like as soon as they have the beer, like, yeah, you're oh, like, well, like, yeah, like all right. and then next thing it's like three in the morning, we're at the local barbecue, like just like getting crazy. So the problem is is that you have to skate the next day. But then the good thing is you just get used to like the, yeah. sh- the yeah. stuff you do in the shows is like you can do it with your eyes closed. So yeah. There's definitely some like moments of being a bit like probably way too drunk to be skating, but just Oh yeah, that, yeah. Because there's sometimes you just wake up and you're still drunk from the night before, and yeah, you never know yeah. when that's going to creep up on you. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, no. that could be that could be dangerous. Yeah, like there's been times where we're like, they'll the guy, the commentator, will be like calling out one of our like out like a 
another guy on the team, jo- his name's Josh as well. He's like BMX rider. And they're like, and now like Josh. And he's like over this throwing up over the side of the skate park. Like, all right. And then like drops in and does his thing. <laughs> Super rusty, but it is what it is. We were having fun and like the people were happy. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah try, like living in the dormitory in the theme park was like crazy crazy times but super fun you just go in the theme park whenever you want like yeah, ride on all the time yeah uh did you and josh nielsen like know each other really well before you went out or were you just like acquaintance like blade acquaintances or how because he's from he's from melbourne originally isn't he he's from sydney yeah he's from sydney, he's from sydney. yeah but, but he lived, um, did he live in melbourne um, for a while he just he went to melbourne for like trips to do like film like seven rats right, or like okay other friends down there and stuff like that so right um but yeah he's he's pretty much always been like residing in sydney up until recently um now, now he lives in brisbane or he lives near you yeah he lives in, in brisbane now like right. he moved up because he was like oh, i just want to be up in brizzy the weather's like a bit warmer and uh we can all hang out and skate all the time so yeah basically he had nothing like keeping him in sydney really so. I, I love how you guys like complain about the weather there one of my one of my friends from australia sent me a photo and they were like god <laughs> it's freezing here it's only 17 degrees and it was a picture of like, yeah. their, their friends in a shop wearing like beanies yeah. and a jacket well it was 15 degrees on saturday and i went to the beach with my daughter and the no beach way was, the beach was packed people were in the sea like, and my daughter was in the seat people were walking about in just shorts and i'm like Brit- british cold and australian cold is not the same thing oh, man, if, it's, if so it's double different. digits here people are hitting the beach yeah, man. Like I, because my dad's English, so I like I've been regularly visiting family. And one time, I remember I was there in summer, and it was like as soon as the sun came out from behind the clouds, like my granddad, my uncle, and my cousin were just like the straight up shirt off, like yep. time to get a tan. And it was like twenty degrees, and I was there, like kind of, you know, well, twenty degrees is tropical. Like we we yeah. struggle to go skating in twenty degrees. We'd like we'd oh, melt. Oh my god. Yeah, nah. We like that's winter in Brisbane. Like in my city, is like pretty much three months of like yeah like around like max 20 but like the coldest it'll get will be like nine maybe it'll be like six degrees for a little bit at like four in the morning but yeah it's perfect not a cloud in the sky <laughs> yeah <absolutely>. yeah <laughs> that's winter but then summer's like the you know we call yeah, the other side I've, of it I've, yeah i've been in well i've been in sydney during summer and i'm like man it is even at night i'm like this is uncomfortably hot this is ridiculous yeah. we'd, we'd we get the a cinema bit more just sweaty for, weather up here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, we went to see Lords of the Rings just to like get air conditioning for three hours. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's inescapable the heat. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just find the comparison so funny. Yeah, it's just so wild. Yeah, mm. or people that and you're there. saying it's like you guys would struggle skating in like twenty degrees, whereas like yeah, we'd, we'd, be, like, we'd like, be like this is hot because we think or we we think like springtime's amazing because it's like ten degrees. And we're like, it's the perfect weather for skating. Like, it's not too cold that there's moisture on the ground, but it's not too yeah. hot that you get like tired and fatigued really quickly. So you can just is that like t-shirt skating weather at like ten oh, degrees? Yeah, you would you would go out you'd go out in like a hoodie, but within mm-hmm. the first spot, as soon as you've done a few lines and warmed up the legs, you're you're in a t-shirt. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. Now we'd be like in a hoodie all day, probably, or a sweatshirt at least. I don't know. It depends how hard you're skating as well. I guess like if you're sweating, then you're sweating. But yeah, yeah. Plus, we've got X. Like we skated. There. Sorry, we've got to. we've got uh, Alan Dick out there from. He's from up like North Scotland originally. He's from just outside yeah. Aberdeen, and it looks like he's acclimatized because he's probably like, yeah, this is too cold. I'm I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in hoodies hoodie and a jacket today, and like back yeah, in man. Aberdeen, he'd have been out in shorts and t shirt. Yeah, man. I've, yeah, he's like he's like skating in shorts a like, fair bit in summer too. You know, he's like still still getting the tan, like yeah. <laughs> still trying to like yeah, give me that sunshine, but um. Yeah, man. Summer summer is like pretty intense though. Like the last summer just gone is like it was it was crazy. It was yeah, seriously crazy. That. Um so you and Josh were in Wuhan at the time coronavirus mm. broke out. Yeah. And then you guys obviously flew home and it became the pandemic that it is. So the only conclusion I can draw from it is that you and Josh are responsible for coronavirus because it started yeah. where you guys were and then you got on planes and distributed it across the earth. Yeah, that's it, man. That we the were only, just like, ah, let's that's the only logical shit. conclusion yeah, there. anyone can draw from this. <laughs> and there's evidence because oh, you made edits. You made edits yeah. in lockdown, going out skating. So, catching catching all the 
all the bat disease. Would you like to um, apologize for spreading coronavirus across the world? Yeah, my bad. Right. Cool. Now that we've got that out of the way, <laughs> um, what was that like? Like you're in the epicenter of mm. the biggest event of our lifetime. Yeah, man. It was, um, it was like weird. It was scary. Like looking back now, knowing that like, you know, knowing what, exactly what coronavirus, well, what coronavirus is and like yeah, what it became, most people yeah. kind of survive it, I guess. And that kind of like, obviously not everyone, sadly, but like, you know, at that time we were just like in Wuhan when, when we went into lockdown and there was like videos of people just like dropping in the street and stuff, you know, like, I don't know how legit the videos were. Oh, where yeah, they got like, from, I think but... there was, there was a lot of fear mongering and a lot of like false media representation yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. definitely. But like, we didn't know. So we were just there like, Oh damn, this is like, wild and we didn't know that we were going to get out or anything like that but um but like we heard about it back in like november uh in 2019 yeah so like and then but it was more just like from friends or people we knew like oh some people are showing up with sars like symptoms or pneumonia like symptoms maybe you should get out of wuhan while you can like from other cities that had heard about it okay and we were just like ah, it's China. Like there's always something crazy going on. Like, I'm not going to leave. Like, like, I'm not going to leave just because like three people had like pneumonia, like symptoms, you know, and then like start hearing about it more and more and more. And then uh, one day we were on a bus going skating and uh, me and Josh, and then we noticed every single person on the bus was like wearing a mask. And we were like, Ooh, maybe we should start wearing a mask. And then like with that, I got a call from a girlfriend who had just been in a meeting at her work where they were saying like everyone has to get a mask and we're, they're going to close down the theme park for like three days or something. Cause it's getting a bit out of control. So she was like, can you, can you go and find some masks and like, make sure you grab some for, for, for me as well. And we got off the bus and we went to like the pharmacy, no masks, like to Walmart, no masks, like everywhere we went, they were like, Oh, we're sold out. And some people were like, obviously there was a language barrier, but we, um, what we, got the gist of was that like there was hardly any masks like left in Wuhan because yeah, people were huge just demand for it. Them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we went to one pharmacy right near uh, this like little yellow ledge that we were going to skate. And we asked if they had a mask uh, or any masks. And the guy at first was like, no, nah, like looking at us like, Oh no, nah, not for foreigners. And then the girl, like we left. And then the girl that was like behind him working there ran out and just gave us to him was like saying like, stay safe. And, uh, and then we proceeded to skate the ledge and caught the bus, I caught a taxi home. And, uh, and then the next day we went into lockdown or basically the next day. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Asian countries obviously dealt with like SARS, um, years ago. And ever since then, even when I lived in Korea, people wore face masks everywhere. Like as soon as they were in yeah. public, like even out walking the street. And I remember being like, oh, that's maybe it's for pollution or whatever, but no, they were, yeah. there was still that paranoia about, you know, yeah, man. disease. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like, there's like the thing in their culture where if you're sick, you wear a mask to stop other people from getting yeah. sick. It's kind of nice rather than just walking around like coughing. But... Yeah. Yeah. And being mm. gross. Yeah. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I remember I sneezed in work once and the reaction I got from the room, like was like, like everyone just kind of looked as if I'd done something incredibly offensive. And I remember like coming out being like, what just ha- like, I can't control that. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a natural thing to sneeze, man. Um, yeah. So, so was it hard to get out to get like back to Australia? Like how did that, how did that work? Yeah. It was like kind of, so we went into lockdown and then we were kind of just like, Oh shit. Like we don't know what's happening. We started checking like, when there was previous lock, like what happened in China when there was other lockdowns and we're reading mm-hmm. stuff like, yeah, this city was locked down for seven months. Like you couldn't leave your apartment for seven months. And we're just there like, Oh my God, what is going on? Uh, and then a few days later, there was like news that the American government was going to uh, like extract the American citizens from Wuhan. So I was like, Oh, well, I'll try and get in contact with like, the Australian government, there's like a MyGov safe traveler website where you can actually like contact or try to get in contact with them. And so I did, and they were like organizing a, an evacuation flight um, for like Aussie citizens in stuck in Wuhan. Um, and then they said that there was a flight and then it was like, yeah, just send your email to this and we'll send you some details about it. And then it was like nothing, nothing, like just constantly calling it. Yeah, what's happening? They're like, we don't know yet. We'll let you know. 
and it was like postponed, postponed. And then all of a sudden it was like, we got a call like tomorrow you're leaving at this time. Like you have to get to the airport, like by your own means and everything. And we were like, Oh, that's cool. Um, like that's great. But the sad thing was like my girlfriend can't, she's Ukrainian. So she couldn't come to Australia without a visa. And her government was not at that time. It was like umming and ahhing about evacuating our citizens, like their citizens. Right. So I basically like had to make the call of like, I hope like we hoped that she was going to get out and then I would get out and then we could just like reconnect once we're like out of Wuhan or like just stay and ride it out. Um, and we decided that the safer thing to do was to leave at the time. So, yeah. So then, yeah, the next, the day that we were leaving was like crazy because the Wuhan government had like locked off the city and there was like no buses, no trains and no cars allowed. Like unless you had a permit, a specific permit, like you couldn't, there was no cars. So unless you knew someone that had a, like a permit, there was no taxis or anything. So there was like no way to get to the airport. And uh, yeah, we just like got in co contact with the local police and then they organized the car. But simultaneously, our English mate, there was like a blader living there called Laith from, from London. I think he's from, yeah, somewhere in the UK. Um, and he got out and he like, managed to find a driver so he gave us the number of that guy and we like sorted it out and then he yeah like in the crying hour we got to the airport like an hour before like the cutoff to get there yeah that's crazy because like, you, you could have quite feasibly not got transport to the airport not got on your flight and there. then who even knows what would have happened or how much longer you'd have been stuck there for yeah yeah man it was like it was pretty weird because it was like obviously we didn't really want to pack up our lives and go, but also like, we didn't know what the hell was going on. So we, yeah, we were just like stressing. And then there was like crazy stress trying to organize like a, a lift and organize all our things. We just like yeah. had to abandon our, like half of our stuff. Cause they had a limit on like what you could take in the airplane. And, uh, but yeah, we managed to like get to the airport and get on the plane and like, yeah, it was a pretty hefty, like see you later to my, to my girlfriend. Like that was super, super tough. Yeah. Um, like, but obviously she had her like team there. So I knew she was with friends and she was safe and stuff like that. If it had just been her, I wouldn't have gone. Um, and then, yeah. And then like w what the Australian government did is they flew us from Wuhan to a place called Christmas Island, okay. which is like where anyone who's trying to get to Australia as an illegal immigrant just gets sent to a, like a detention, not a detention center, like a refugee camp okay on an island off the coast of us of off the coast of western australia like closer to jakarta than it is to australia but it's still like australian right. territory um and so we had to spend two weeks in their like in the detention center on the island um as like quarantine that's kind of so you basically got an almost experience of what it's like to be mm. yeah like to like to be, be like a refugee in a way yeah to be like fleeing a country essentially yeah mm. like that's yeah. yeah that's that's crazy yeah man it was full on and um, like it was full on but in a way it was like an adventure i don't know like me and josh just like kind of like you know trying to make like laughs and smiles out of it and like okay. channel seven got a hold of the like uh, which is like a news channel here in oz they saw the vlog contacted us and they were like we want to show you on tv and like we'll pay you money and stuff like that so we like sweet let's go <laughs> so they were like we had to basically we just like in this thing every day and had to like send them like clips off our phone and right. yeah and they ended up paying us like two thousand dollars each just for like phone content hey, which was that's all right you're like yeah, yeah. Sh show my youtube channel so get me some get me some followers here Try yeah they like they they played um clips from the wuhan like vlog no on way. like national tv for like days and it was like they they we knew they were going to play clips because they told us, but they didn't normally they're like, Oh, can you send us videos of you doing a backflip on blades? But they like put in Josh's like fish brain and like grinding on handrails and stuff. Like it was cool on national TV. So yeah. yeah. Cool to see like actual street skating getting shown, not stereotypical. Like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That quite rare. I'm guessing you're not going back this year to do shows. No, like, yeah, nah, we, the, you still, can't really go anywhere from australia i was about to say australia's not letting people leave the country are they no no nah, unless you have like a 
like a real reason, like if a family member passed away or business, you can go. Um, yeah. But if you just want to travel, like it's pretty much impossible, sadly, because yeah, I really want to go see my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Did I not see something saying they were, it was at least like 2022 when they thought everyone would be vaccinated or something or 2023 or something like that? And that's, yeah. That's like, so they, they hope that everyone's got like a vaccine by 2022, I think it is. Yeah. But there's already travel opened up to New Zealand now. So we can do like quarantine-less travel between Australia and New Zealand. You just arrive okay. like like it, like it was before. Yeah. And they're talking about Singapore, I think. I don't know. Um, I kind of got like so over the whole coronavirus thing because we were there from the start that like when it was like getting worse and worse in Australia, like the news, you turn on the news and it was just like the world's coming to an end. And I just, I couldn't deal with it. So I was like, I don't want to know. Yeah, like, it's, I'm it's just going to live my yeah. life like, and yeah. If, if Half of what they were saying was like bullshit anyway. So, yeah. But if you're watching that kind of news all day, every day, like that would send anyone into like depression or spiral, like even the most level headed, like person who's never struggled yeah. with that before. If that's, it's a lot to take in every day. Yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely. Uh, um, so what have you been doing for work since you've been back then? Like, have, have you been able to work or cause um, it's got to be tougher yeah, to find so a job, especially when, you know, everything's shut down and, yeah out. man basically i got home and i thought i was going to be home for a month so i didn't because i was planning like my girl like once i knew that my girlfriend was evacuated and she was in ukraine it was like oh well we'll just meet it in europe like the virus is only in china you know so the rest of the world is fine and then like over the course of that month like things just got worse and basically the whole world shut down um and so I didn't really know how long I was going to be home for, but I knew that as soon as I could leave, I would leave. So I was like, I'll just use a bit of my savings and, um, and just get on like the, it's called Centrelink in Australia, which is like the doll, like the government, like handout. Um, and so it was the first time ever in my life that I'd done that. And I went and like queued up and did it all. And I was like, yeah, cool. Like, I don't know how long I'm going to be here for. There's no jobs because everything's closed. And then two days after I got on it, they like doubled it. So yeah, it was like, that's, it was pretty, actually that's like, pretty good fortune. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the normal payment plus this coronavirus supplement, which was like, it ended up being like 1200 a fortnight to like do nothing. Well, I don't know. In pounds, it's like eight, 700 pounds a fortnight. That's hilarious because we get, I think it's, it's like less than half of, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's almost a third of that is what we get. Yeah, so, that's what it so is like, now. It's back so to like, that now. Yeah, when but you're on employment, you're like, I need to get a job. Like, I need mm. to get out of this. This is, yeah. you can't survive off it. Yeah, man, that's what that's what it is now. Like, it's back to that. And there's all these, like, things where you have to apply for jobs and stuff. But at the time, it was like, you didn't have to apply for, for jobs. Like, in your month, you just, you just literally just, like, if you didn't have work, you just signed up and they, like, gave you money, basically. So I just took that and I was like, well, I'm just going to, like, I've paid taxes in the past. I'm just going to like get back what I put in, live and blade as much as I can. And then obviously we went into like a full lockdown where you couldn't even like use skate parks and all that. So I just ended up like doing nothing and like saving this money. And then, uh, stay, yeah. Stay and home, then stay at home, drink beers, get fat. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Basically like get the coronavirus bod going. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then as like over the, the course of like the year, like went on, um, basically like I was like, should I get a job? I don't, I still don't really know what I'm like going to do, but my, um, my dad owns like a commercial cleaning business where we like clean like big industrial, like, um, bins and stuff like that. And like, okay. Um, compactors. And so, um, he, they like sell franchises. So basically like there's people in Brisbane, like in different areas that like go out and do all this cleaning and one of the guys who had a franchise like was retiring. So they had this whole area of work where they needed someone to be like out cleaning. Um, and I was just like, well, I'll like, I'll fill in his place until you find someone to like buy the franchise. And so, yeah, I've just been doing that and it's like six and a half days a month and it's enough to like totally live off of. Right. Um, okay. like, not, oh, so, not, so it's just like, it's like projects you do. Yeah, basically, like we have clients, and um, and just like each month, yep. it's like the same kind of thing. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's like six, yeah, like six and a half days a month. Um, enough, yeah, enough money to like buy food and yep. and stuff like that, and like live, um, not like saving anything. And uh, and then also like on the side, I 
been doing like some video work and some design work again. So like if I knew exactly what I wanted to do, I would just get a job in a design studio or something like that. Or like maybe doing video work if I, if I could get a full-time job doing that. But I still kind of don't want to get settled into that stuff. I'm like, I'm happy having time to skate and like go skating on a Thursday all day at the moment. So Yeah, because with those like post-production skills, I wouldn't have thought it would have been too hard to like make up a portfolio and get some either freelance work or even use it to try and get a like a job job. Yeah, like I've got one job at the moment that I'm doing for um, like a packaging manufacturer they just manufacture like any boxes of shapes and sizes and they um they hit me up that they wanted some promotional videos doing so i'm doing that on the side as like a little project and and then i'll probably just like once i'm done that try and find another one keep going so nice yeah it'd be cool to like eventually build that up to be like a a thing yeah but uh, yeah yeah definitely um so one thing i do like about you is like you're part of this new generation of bleeders that don't i was my like main criticism of why bleeding kind of went in the direction it was is everyone waited for like companies to do things for them or skaters Mm. waited for like companies to sponsor them or support them or pay them and then got better when it didn't happen and i feel like you've like went outside that because you've like found like found a job where you can use skating but it's not actually within the skating industry but you're still skating you're still exposing people to blading it's just not Mm. in the blading industry but it's providing an income and it is blading related and then on top of that you're creating your own content you're not waiting for like the you know the filmer to come and like make sections of it you're doing all that stuff yourself and you're doing it to high standard with the film and editing and then top of that as well you've also got is it is it called stay rolling is that right yeah 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 and you've That's basically created your own like mini brand as well with creative mm. products. And, you know, it's not like it's just a t-shirt brand, like you're making like jeans and stuff like that as well. Or like, yeah, pants. Yeah. Pants, yeah. Pants and, and it's uh, like, and stuff, stuff. if just but, more yeah. skaters did that and took the initiative and, you know, thought of themselves, not as a skater that a brand can market, but thought of themselves as a brand that they should market. Yeah. hundred percent. Then 100%, man. I think we'd be in yeah. a much better condition because you've got other people like CJ doing it now and Nils yeah. with his channel and Joe yeah, and, and people just finally realizing that they do have a lot of like most skaters have a bigger Instagram like I'm meant to be a media source most mm. most good pro skaters have a bigger media following than I do so mm. or have some of them even have bigger media followings than other brands so why are they waiting for brands to do it for them when they have more influence than the brand does yeah or they have more respect than the brand does like yeah look at a company like razors right now like razors is going through a brand crisis like people Mm. are slagging them off left right and center and yet there's skaters on their team who could easily go off and do something maybe not a skate brand but like like use their influence to completely yeah. better their situation well it's like basement like they just make edits and then they made a thing like basement with the clothing like yeah they're killing they it turned, yeah. they turned their like creative edits into a brand yeah um, and i think a lot of people can do that nowadays like it's it takes there's definitely an element of like uh like a lot of effort and being you know, super like managing your time well and, um, and that kind of thing. But, um, if you, if you enjoy like skating, like I love skating, I love the whole culture and everything about it. So why would I not like, to me, it, it never feels like work at all. Like making clothes for stay rolling doesn't feel like a job. It's just like, I want to do that. And then if I put it out and people like, people like it and they buy it, then that's awesome. But if not, like I, I'm just making stuff that I like to do, like it's same with the videos or with anything. And I feel like that's what Nils is doing with his vlogs. Like he's just, he's just like doing what he loves and like filming it basically. And it's like super enjoyable. Oh, CJ, like that it's all super enjoyable to watch. Yeah. And like anyone nowadays can easily be a brand or brand themselves, I guess would be like the way to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like you're, you're seeing it even in recent years with people like Bobby, uh, Bobby Spazov, who, you know, someone, from where he lives in the world would never have got a pro skate 10 years, 20 yeah, years ago. And now he's got two yeah. to his name or Ilya Savison, who's basically become like the new yeah. viral sensation on Instagram. Like every so clip he puts up is 
like a jaw dropper and it's like yeah. you know he's getting a pro skate at some point it's coming yeah. because if he if yeah. he just keeps going the way he's going it's inevitable because Rosies are going to be like this kid has got an insane following following yeah. yeah yeah that's the thing as well now it's like back uh like kind of a couple of years ago like like back in the day it was like to be a pro it was like you were like it was all about the level of skating you had. It was just like, you do hammers or you do like you skate in a certain way or you, but like, you're just like a level up. Whereas now it's like, obviously you have to be like at a level to, of, of skating, but it's like, there's no point if you're doing like hurricane top soles on drop rails, but you can't like post it to anywhere, you know, like if no yeah, one if you, sees yeah, if you, it. Then, if you don't know how to market yeah. yourself, you can yeah, do that stuff all you, you want, but yeah. Yeah. You're not like, as far as a brand's concerned, like, it's the guy that gets like more likes and, and puts out regular content that's enjoyable and stuff like that. That's going to work better for them in terms of like, they're going to make more sales and get their name out there more than like, yeah. Some guy who's like, just even if he's not doing hammers, like he might be an amazing skater at like tech something or, or, or anything or super creative, but if he's not marketing himself, then like yep. no one knows. Yeah, because brands won't do the job for you because they don't have no. a media manager. Most of them don't have mm. like team managers. They've just got mem- like the members of staff don't have time to promote you. They want you yeah. to do it for them. Yeah. So yeah, um, I've always kind of thought that with Josh Nielsen because there's loads of skate. I'll, there's so many skaters in Australia over the years that I've like absolutely loved, and Josh is a perfect example of that. Josh is like so talented on skating man he, he doesn't promote himself at all and like i rarely see stuff of him on social yeah. media he's, he's getting like, he's definitely gotten better like he's in got, the, he's, in he's the got, past like yeah two he's years. gotten better recently like, yeah yeah but he could literally just put up a single clip he could like he could take his entire section from vine street Two, just mm. individualize it into clips and just put up one clip from each thing and people would be like holy shit L- look what yeah. this guy is capable of he's incredible man he's like yeah, when skating with Josh is like super inspirational, definitely. Like, he obviously he's a he's a mate and he's fun to hang out with, but watching him like watching him skate in real life is like it's pretty special. He's, he's not. He is but, um, very good. Um, mm-hmm. So I've only got one last like set of questions, and then we'll wrap things up. And it's, it's yeah, Australia really. based, so I, I want to know. And mm-hmm. there's a there are wrong answers to this question, and if you give me a wrong answer, I will tell you it's wrong. Oh my god! I hope it's not a pop quiz about like oh old Aussie blading <laughs> yeah I should have done that that would actually be yeah better. I did not I'm gonna do, yeah I'm gonna, that's a good you've given me a great idea I'm going to do that for the next one but this one is yeah. who's who's the best Australian skater of all time hmm that's tough I mean Ryan Arnold is pretty damn good like he was winning the Asian X games when he was like 13 he's got steez the only thing is he doesn't really like as far as I don't I know, like he doesn't really skate anymore. Um but I would say like of all time, damn, that is there's been so many. I think overall, like what CJ's done has been pretty epic in terms of like he's good at street, he can he's amazing at park, he can skate a mega ramp, like he's at a high level across the board like he's not just an amazing street skater he's like an amazing skater across the board and then to branch out and kind of like skate in a way that got Seba to branch into aggressive side of things that's like a pretty big deal um at at the time when it was happening as well and like just in general like I think that of all time he's probably like at a level across the board that's like pretty decent but there's been a lot like even okay. like i would say josh is up there like he's pretty good so it's tough man yeah i'll let you away with cj because he's very mm. close he's very close but he's not quite there i would say tim ward beats, beats yeah. cj yeah. oh man because tim ward could do street and, and vert make, too right make yeah. amazing street sections and he did make mm. amazing street sections he could do park yeah, and win all the park events and he also murdered vert and won medals and street and park yeah it's true cg even like cg never won the or maybe maybe it has actually he's probably placed as a kid when he was younger in vert competitions but not on like intern big international ones i don't think no not that i I mean i'm not i'm not too sure but yeah man there's like there's been a lot of the thing with australia is there's been a lot of like 
super shredders that just didn't get outside of Oz. Like there's a guy from my city who's just started skating again called Anthony Nalon. And he's like, a, it's like a name that every Aussie blader that skated back in the day knows because he was just insane. And then he obviously stopped, he, uh, he like injured himself um, and then stopped skating. But he was like incredible. And like no one outside of Australia that like, you know, it wasn't a name that was like as common as like, um, you know, the few names that have gotten out. Like Blake Dennis, obviously, like is a pretty common name. Yeah. Um, but like there's been so many really, really good skaters from australia that just haven't like it's just a bit like we're so far yeah i think now it's like it's easier with social media like where everything's like the world is a smaller place but at that time it was like if you were from brisbane like or something like that like there was no one like yeah yeah it's it's easier with social media because mm. to get awareness of that person but it still yeah. doesn't change the fact that for a brand to sponsor someone in your part of the world is very expensive because sending product oh, yeah. is very expensive unless you have a distributor and this product's going there anyway you can just siphon yeah. some off but for brands mm. that don't like small brands and yeah. flying someone it's a lot cheaper to fly someone from america yeah. to yeah. you know an american event or from Europe to America than it is to fly someone from Australia to an American event. So yeah, all the way yeah. like down. Like under, and but. I do feel like that has screwed over people because you mentioned Ryan Arnold. I think Ryan Arnold's probably one of the most, at one point he was one of the most progressive street skaters we've ever had. Like his section, mm. the first, well, both fine streets was insane, but he never, he never got pro for sh like shadow. Although weirdly shadow did want him to be pro. But I think yeah, I point, heard that too. I, heard I think by that down. point he was already well. I think it had just gone so long that he was already over yeah. it. Like yeah, um, and I think he got. I think he did get a pro wheel for like you are here or something at one point. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. There's an edit. There's a yeah. I, I remember that in Paris. Out. But yeah. by that point, it was it was just when he finally got offered something, and Shadow wouldn't have offered him much. Like he pr they probably uh -huh. wouldn't have flown him anywhere, and he's probably like, well, why bother? Yeah, the pressure or whatever. And I'm kind of worried that that's what's happening to Gav Drum as well. Like Gav Drum is an amazing oh, yeah. skater who can skate street, park, so progressive mm -hmm. and pretty much everything. But yet no brand has ever given him a skate. And I'm like, yeah. when I heard he turned down Rosie's to get on them, I was like hoping like, oh God, like hopefully John's finally going to reward him with a skate. But it hasn't Man, happened yet. Fingers so. crossed. Gav, like Gav honestly like deserves a pro boot. Um, but there's there like, there's obviously a lot of people that deserve a pro boot, but Gav's like stand out, like in the way that he, he just has that, that thing, you know, I feel like there's, yeah. With, with some people, when you see them skate, you're like, Oh, he's just like, he's got it. He's got, he's got like the special something. I don't know. It's like, there's like, he's, been, that, like yeah. he's won the events. He's won blade cup. He goes to America all the time. He's been to mm. Europe loads. He's had mm. all the video sections. So it's like, he's ticked every box. He's done, yeah. he's done everything. Every other person that's he's done the cover of magazines and stuff yeah. like that. And like Oz and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. You just kind of wonder like, what more does he have to do? Mm. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's coming up. I can't. I have no yeah, idea. Maybe, but, um, maybe it is. Yeah, I don't know. But then yeah, he's been, maybe he's been, right now as we speak, he's out he's there. He's been filming. quieter in recent years, though, so it's tough to know because you only see the yeah. odd thing of him now. Whereas before, it felt like you'd see him everywhere. So yeah, yeah. a bit. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, man. There's a lot. Like to to answer your question, like, I don't know if who's the best of all time in Oz, but there's been so many like good i'd, I'd really say it's very close skater. between between yeah. tim and cj for who's had the most like influence internationally yeah 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 i think that yeah for sure but even like yes even like pe people from like justin buchanan was like a, a oh, name yeah, he that, was, like, yeah he was massive yeah. and he came to the states yeah. a lot yeah 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 and he was just like doing hammers and like those kinds of things and um there's like, didn't another he have a guy from my city he Tom had a daily red cover didn't he I Just think so, a, yeah. I think he did. I think he does. can. Probably doing a kind grind. I think I it was know. a drop ledge or something, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But he was a beast. Like, yeah, there's just a lot of people like sending it down here. And like, unfortunately, if you didn't know a guy with a camera or like you didn't know the guy that like, if even if you had a camera, you didn't know how to get the video out there. Like it was just, yeah. yeah. But thankfully, thankfully, like social media makes it easy now. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, Australia's always had an insane history when it comes to skating and so many just progressive mm -hmm. all-round skaters. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. It's uh, deep. 
deep in our blood. <laughs> it is. I remember like I remember even seeing like the crank videos when they first came out and being like, holy crap, these guys are mental. Yeah. So mm. um Yeah, fully. Yeah, it's wild. So what does what does the future hold for Rob? Am I saying your second name right? Is it Kellett or Kellett? It's Kellett. Yeah, you Kellett, say it right. right. Yeah. It right. Like, yeah. A lot of people say it like Gillette, like the razor, but yeah, <laughs> Kellett. Yeah. So what's what's uh, 2021 holding for you? Apart from um, obviously trying to see your girlfriend, because yeah, so oh, many man, people yeah, must but, have been separated by like I know CJ has as well. Like so mm. many people relationships must have broken up or families must just be separated because of yeah. that because it's like you can't leave your country or you can leave your yeah. country but you can't get into the one you want to get into yeah fully man it's um we're working on a visa at the moment to get her here but the australian government is pretty nuts with like how who they let in and how easy it is like it's a full thing like um we're going to a visa i'm going to a visa agent and when he was like when we were starting and he was like it's obviously not on physical paper anymore, but if it was, I would tell you that it, the weight, like it's one and a half kilos worth of paper, not how many pages, like it's, it's like a lot of paperwork. So yeah, going through that. Um, no, so no, that's like, you, it's like, it's like five gigs. I think it's like five gigs. That's what you're, that's what you're dealing with here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like five gigs of data. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just that um, skating, filming a thing for Josh he's like working on a thing at the moment um that's, yeah that's promising i'm not going to say any, I haven't anything seen a section I from well. him since i don't think mm. i've seen a section since fine street fine street no nah, not of just josh oh he, i think he i don't know which one came out first he did put out a street edit from sydney but it might have been pre vine pre chapter two i'm not sure okay. um so yeah working on a thing for josh uh, and then my two other homies that we skate with, like James, my best mate, and then uh, my other friend, Nat, they're also working on street things. So we're just like filming constantly. Um, also, we want to start on Neon Inline 2 because Neon Inline was always supposed to be like a longer thing and we just, our time, we just got cut short. So, right. yeah, so going to start on that eventually. Probably at the same time, we're just, uh, just going to do all the Neon stuff in the nighttime and then like... Yeah, it's just harder because, like, in China, the cities are, like, lit up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, luckily, Brisbane is a bit of, a, like, a, you know, it's like a, there's skyscrapers and stuff, but they're not, they, the lighting game's not as on point as China, that's yeah. for sure. So, going to have to, like, luckily, I got a new MacBook, so, like, it can handle, <laughs> can handle the <laughs> I'm about to go wild in After Effects, yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, other than that, yeah, just hanging with the fam, enjoying the wheels. I'm definitely going to work on a new, like, a new video for that too right. um and stay rolling stuff as well like i've i've actually got like boxes and boxes of clothes that is new stay rolling stuff that i just i was trying to do like stay rolling stuff the visa film this wheel video like it, just too much and i had to be like no like the wheels and then like yeah and then like the visa and then the stay rolling stuff so yeah because i was just busy. like yeah. My, yeah i was spreading myself way too thin Cross. and then i'm like what like working as well and like doing the video stuff for yeah the packaging place and all that so mm. well it sounds like you've got a lot planned yeah can't i definitely can't wait to see the josh section whenever that drops so yeah looking mm. forward to that yeah, it should be good. yeah man yeah, uh, yeah congratulations on the wheel love the Dude, promo so for much. it and yeah hopefully you'll have another one in the not too distant future yeah well hopefully i mean yeah i'm i'm just hyped that like this is a, like these ones are a reality and like the people liked them and like i can't believe they sold out so i'm like super blessed conjure like opportunity of a lifetime so super blessed for sure nice well thanks for taking the time to talk to me today and awesome cheers dave hopefully speak soon yeah thanks brother All take right. it easy Bye. much love Close up.